Hello, my brilliant friend. Oh, dog noises. Dog, say hi. <clears throat> Not to be confused with Elena Ferranti's novel, which I actually really didn't like. I felt like, as far as friends go, that was not a good friend. Anyway, but that, that's beside the point. My brilliant and amazing friend, um, I am back to you with part two. Um, during this video, I want to talk about purling, casting off types of yarn, which I will bring into the frame later, and um, maybe some um, techniques that uh, you can do with just purling and knitting. Um, and then um, also show you Ravelry, which is like where all the patterns live. And then um, that should get you kind of excited and thinking about maybe what you might want to do from an actual project. Um, a lot of people start with like a washcloth as their first project. Um, I basically learned to like knit a really long swatch and then I like went ahead and started doing actual projects because I was like, I'm not going to use a washcloth or I don't want to just knit squares. I was, you know, I'm kind of one of those people who decide to bite off like the whole thing instead of taking it bit by bit. But whatever, you know, to each our own. So, um, so anyway, so purling and casting off. Um, and so I basically knit a couple more rows of the garter stitch that I did last time in the last video. Um, and you can see now the well-defined garter bumps, or garter ridges, sorry, with their pearl bumps. And on the back, it looks the same and it lays really flat, which is one reason why a lot of people like garter. Um, and, uh, and so that is obviously just knit, 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 like you were doing. And also, by the way, your knitting looks fantastic. It looks so nice and even. Obviously, I mean, your tension might be a little tight, but that's honestly how everybody is at first. Like, because it's, you're just trying to, to manage to get the, the yarn to do what you want. And so like your, your impulse is to like hold on for dear life. And my mom used to accuse me of choking the yarn to death um, when I knit. And I was like, mom. And now like I'm... I'm actually either on gauge usually or slightly knit loose. Um, so, you know, you never know. You'll you'll settle into your pattern and then you'll know. Uh, or sorry, your, yeah, your, not pattern, but like your routine and then you'll know. So, okay. So we did knitting last time, which I'm not going to repeat because I think you, you got, you pretty much got the hang of it. So for purling, um, for knitting, you've been holding the yarn and actually, well, I will, I'm not going to knit, but I will. You've been holding the yarn like this. And you've been going from behind and around. Okay, so purling, we're doing, we're going from the back to front, like I said last time. So because of that, you can't start with the yarn in the back or you'll end up with a yarn over an extra th stitch. So you start with the yarn in the front. So there's a, a lot of abbreviations we use in knitting and W-Y-I-F always means with yarn in front. W-Y-I-B means with yarn in back. So with yarn in front is how you purl by standard definition. So what you would do to purl, and I do it, I basically, you bring the yarn in front of your needles, you take that right needle and you slide it into the front loop from right to left, back to front, and then you just wrap the yarn over the front way and then pull off and bam, see these pearl ridges? Now you've just created another one. So back, your, your, needle is from, your needle goes from right to left in the front of the front leg of the loop, around the needle, pull it through and off. Same thing, around, pull it through and off. Around, Pull it through and off, around, pull it through and off, around, pull it through and off, pull it through and off, around. Pull through and off, and then the last one, same deal. So if you turn your work, you will now see that the back looks like what you normally would think of as your front knitting. It's the stockinette on the side, and you've got two, two pearl bumps in a row on this side. So if you knit this side, you know what I mean, then 
you will have essentially a little ridge of stockinette going on and you can see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna knit, 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 knit. Excuse me, my stomach. And so here we are, even longer. So I just purled the last uh, row and then I knit this row and yet they look the same. So magic, it's basically just backwards knitting is what purling is. Um, and if you look at the back, we're starting to get this lovely little reverse stockinette, they call it, where there's a purl bump in every single row rather than like, this alternating one like down here. Okay, so that is, I will do one more row of, row of purling and then I will show you casting off. Cause honestly, it's not that hard to learn to purl. It's it's a little clumsier feeling. Like you feel like everything's a lot looser than when you knit. Um, but eventually you'll just get the hang of it just like purling. So hold the, the yarn and some people wrap the yarn elaborately. I just hold it. I just hold it and like gr firmly grip it, but don't tight so it's that it can slide through your fingers easily. So, and I can back it up so you can see a little bit easier what's going on with the yarn. So I just hold the yarn back to front, purl, back to front, purl, back to front, purl, Pearl, I don't know why my stomach's doing this. I did this last time too. To front, pearl. Back to front, pearl. Front. Okay, last one. And you can see. So now I have like essentially like few rows of garter down here and a few rows of stockinette up at the top. And um, I'm gonna, I'll show you how to cast off now, but you might notice when I do that this little edge up here will roll. And that's because um, the way the garter is is even, you're doing pearls on, on, on one side and then, you know, knits on the, on, you know, the same side back and forth. So you end up with a stitch that lays like really, really flat. Stockinette, um, because all the pearl bumps are in the back, has a 10, and see to curl in on itself and so you'll see sometimes when people do swatches or when they do shawls um, they will either put ribbing or some other element along the edge or they'll do an i-cord something along the edges to keep it from rolling in and, and um, unless that's an, a design element some cuffs have like rolled cuffs then that's usually a design element but so you'll bit but that's all stuff that you just kind of learn when you start to work with fabric and figure out how the yarns behave and stuff like that so anyway now, how do you get all this beauty off your needles, right? You've been, you've been knitting it for a while and you're ready to, to do, um, to get it off. Well, just like, just like casting on, binding off has as many different ways of doing it as you can think. And there's all sorts of interesting ones about like that are, you know, extra stretchy. Some are Pico where you do, you knit like a little chain and then bind off. And there, there's some really pretty decorative ones. Um, there's some, some that are like, frankly, my favorite as far as really being stretchy. But I will show you the very basic, uh, just regular old bind off. And basically that is, and that's actually the bind off is a good, good thing because some of the stitches decreases are gonna include these kind of concepts that are in um, the bind off. And I think increases and decreases are the, are the stitches that go on to make lace work and allow you to do shaping and things like that. Um, and those are those are kind of the next step for sure on learning to knit is doing increases and decreases. But you'll be surprised about the uh, number of amazing things you can do with just knitting and purling in, you know, and I'll show you some some stuff, some uh, yarn, but then I'll also show you some, some techniques um, on cowls that I've knit that don't even require um, increases or lace work. So anyway, and then I'll show you some other stuff that does and you can see what the possibilities are. Okay, so, so to bind off, you're basically gonna knit a stitch, 
then you're going to knit a ne the next stitch and you're going to pass the first stitch you knit over the se second stitch you knit and then you're going to do the same thing over and over again until you only have one stitch left so i'll show you how that works so we have 10 stitches and we're binding off so we're going to knit one stitch knit okay now we're going to knit the next stitch okay now we're going to pass this guy first stitch number one over this guy leaving this guy on the needle so this guy's going to come off the needle and then that guy that second guy stays on the needle so now you have bound off one stitch you have only between both needles nine stitches so now you've already knit this guy once so what you're going to do is knit again pull through and now you're going to take this guy who who you had before and you're gonna put him off, pull him off the needle. So now you've bound off two stitches and we have eight left. So knit and then pass. And you just hold on to everything. Um, I like to hold on to the edge um, as well as, let's see, when I'm passing. I like to hold on to the, to, to the fabric I'm passing as well as sometimes even to the stitch that's not coming off the needle and you can see that this is creating like another little chain along the edge and each every bind off has a different design as well so um but this is the basic one and it's you know relatively stretchy so knit and then pass Oop, don't split your yarn knit then pass Ah, sorry, I went out of frame there. Knit, I'm trying to do this close. Oh, look, I did split my yarn. That was a good lesson. Do you see how my needle is now inside my yarn instead of all on the edge? That, that's a split yarn. So just go back out, pull out, and then make sure you're not splitting the yarn. And then... Okay. One more after this. So you knit the last one, uh, and then you pass the last slip sti sl stitch over, and then you just have one left, and all you basically do is just pull it, pull it and snip it. Um, I'm not gonna snip it, because I'm probably just gonna frog this, which frogging just means undoing it all at, later. So, but you would just pull this and snip it, and then you would have this lovely little square, and I will get up really close, and you can see, that this is the the bound off edge that i just did we had the cast on edge from the first time and then these are the garter ridges and then this is the stuck it and so basically i just made an object out of yarn that started out as just a ball and it ended up a square so i don't know that's what i really love about knitting you you start off with this this thing and it's like it's just a skein of yarn and it ends up being something you can actually useful a functional item and so now the stitches are off your needles yay and you've bound off oh I'm about to spill my tea um you bound off and uh you know this is basically the very very basics this is how you knit um and then everything else from here is just cool awesome additional skills that you get to learn to keep it fun and interesting so I'm going to kind of tilt this up a little low if it works. Okay, so this is basically the basics. Um, and now I want to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about some other stuff that matters when you're knitting. Um, and part of that is yarn. Whee! Okay, so these beauties are essentially the various weights of yarn. Um, yarn is weighted sim based on the thickness of the yarn and each thickness gets a different gauge. Gauge is how many stitches will fit in one inch of knitting. So if you're knitting a swatch just like we did, you would measure how many stitches along here, one, two, three, four, we're in, in, in an inch, and then how many rows, one, two, three, four, five, we're in an inch, and that would be your gauge. So obviously, the smaller the needle you use, the finer the gauge you get. And the thinner the yarn you use, the finer. The 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 fit the smaller the needle you use, the finer the gauge you get. The you use finer yarn when you're knitting on smaller needles. You're I think I gave you a size eight, which is what I was using. I mean you cannot knit 
um, you know, lace weight yarn on an eight. It'll just, well, you can, but it'll look like a spider web, you know, because this is how fine lace weight yarn is. It's just not, you know what I mean? The yarn that we knit on it on a size eight just now was a DK weight. So you can see how very fine this is compared to what we were knitting. So yarns range from lace weight, which is this one. And I don't even think I have a gauge for it because it was hand dyed. Oh, maybe I do. Nope, hand dyed by Jennifer Watkins. And uh, so, you know, this one skein is nine, almost 900 yards. So, you know, that is a, why am I tangled? That is a whole lot of yarn for, you know, what's probably a similar gram amount to this guy. They look like about the same size, but this is only 400 yards. So it's half the amount of, of length as the, as the lace weight. So from the finest to the thickest, we have lace weight, which I showed you is a super fine. And honestly, I don't, I think this and maybe a couple others are the only ones I have in lace weight. I just don't knit very much in it. My mom really loves it, but I'm more of a fingering girl. So we'll move on to fingering. This is fingering weight. And this is um, Ba La Jolla. And it is a gauge 30 stitches per four inches. So oftentimes they will um, give you, the, the uh, labels are a great way, place to look to find out what weight a, a yarn is. It'll, the label will tell you a lot about what you need for the yarn. For instance, this says superwash merino, which means it's a, you can put this yarn in the washing machine. I have never tried to put any of my yarn in the washing machine, but apparently um, this, you know, the superwashes are like pre-shrunk, you do not want to know, well, you do not want to see what happens to a beautiful hand-knit piece of fabric when you stick it in the washing machine. It will become a tiny ball of felt. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so superwash is supposed to not felt. So this is the superwash merino. It's 500, 400 yards, 115 grams, and it's 30 gauge. And they say to do it on a US 0 to 2 needle, um, but honestly, I would probably knit this on a 4 to 6 because um, I'm not knitting socks. If you were going to knit socks, you would do it on a needle that small. So... And yeah, so expensive that is. Anyway, so this is this is merino wool. Also, this one was alpaca silk cashmere. So you can see there's a lot of different fabrics that are, or a lot of different fibers that are used in the wool. Um, this, so this is a fingering weight, which is thicker than the lace weight. Pull them next to each other. Thicker than the lace weight. Which I mean, that one's being held double, so. My gosh. Okay. Sorry about my focus issues there. <laughs> it's like, nope, sorry, not cooperating. Okay. So this is lace and this is fingering. So there, this is like double the thickness of this. It doesn't look like that much more, but it really is when you go to knit it up. So from fingering, we go to sport. Sport weight is thicker than than fingering but thinner than some of the heavier weights and this is um shirtsy cat i believe and uh, i think it's a it's a merino nylon blend and it's 462 yards and i don't know if she had gauge on here she probably doesn't some of the indie dyers do not this is luxadorna it's 100 percent cashmere and it's a dk weight which is what we were knitting with um, and this is actually a gradient pack, so it's a bunch of, these are just different skeins that are linked together, but, um, you can see that it says DK weight, it's 200 yards total, it's 100% cashmere, and I believe, yes, so the gauge here is, is 5.25 per, per one inch, which means that it is, uh, did it, uh, 21 stitches per four inches. And if you recall, this one was 30 stitches per four inches. So this is only 21 stitches per four inches. So this is a, just a heavier weight. Um, this is Aaron weight, which is again, not a weight I use very often, although it is, um, it's kind of, it's heavier than DK, but it's not quite worsted. Sometimes it can be considered worsted, um, depending this is Noro. So it's Japanese and since it's a, silk mohair wool blend it's not the softest stuff but it's kind of it's got really pretty colors a lot of people like it I don't actually love it all that much I got this as a hand-me-down from my mom who really hates Noro um the Japanese can make a lot of great things but Noro yarn is not not one of my the best okay this 
is a worsted weight. So worsted, you're going to get into a lot of, obviously it's way bulkier than, um, you know, the lace weight. And it's often used for hats, for scarves, for sometimes you'll get sweaters and worsted weight. Um, but it's definitely not used for delicate. You're not really going to really knit, knit lace and worsted weight. Um, and you can see that this is a hundred percent wool. It's not super washed. So this one is not one that you could throw in there, but this whole skein is only 220 yards and it's 18 to 20 per four inches, meaning that it's even less than the, the 21 that was the DK. It's like down, getting down to like 21 and it says to use a six to eight needle. And I, you, I've even used like to 10 or 11, 12 with, with worsted weight. And this is a by Manastel Uruguay, another indie dyer. And then here is bulky, woo, super bulky. This was a skein I got from my sister-in-law for Christmas. And I am gonna have to figure out something to do with it. Um, and it, it, this is bulky yarn. So um, probably that's gonna be a hat <laughs> or maybe a cow, a tight cow. But bulky is probably almost as big as it gets um, unless you start knitting roving, in which case you will um, probably wanna spin that first. But this is Malabrigo, which is a really great dyer. And it's pure merino wool and it feels so good. But yeah, don't hand wash it because it's mer it's not super wash. It's only 90 yards and it's 150 grams. So it's even more weight than the fingering. This is 400 yards. This is 90. And it only gets 8 to 10 stitches per 4 inches. So the gauge is, and you're looking at US 13 to 17 needles. So you can see kind of how these yarns work as far as from like super fine all the way to super heavy. And so there are so many options in yarn between the fiber choice between, and, and of course I am a, like a crazy wool lady, but like there's also bamboo, there's silk, there's tinsel, there's obviously nylons and acrylics, which I don't tend to knit with because I'm a snob. But then, you know, um, you also have the cashmere's, you have a yak, Alpaca, I love the feel of. You also have um, musk ox <laughs> and mink. You know, you can knit with basically and anything. I mean, some people have their dog hairs um, spun up. Um, my dogs can't imagine knit, spinning their hair. It would probably not be too awesome because the, the only hairs that come off them are those icky little floofy ones that are just like, I'm sure they would be edgy. So anyway, so, but this is an idea of what's out there. Um, that can build your stash. I have my stash. I'm going to move so you can see. My stash currently takes up like this whole <laughs> wall of closet. It's really sad. And I mean, it's awesome, but it's sad as well. So, um, you know what I mean? But that said, the stash really, that's why people have a stash because you know, you have different patterns, you have different things that you wanna knit. So what can you do with just the knit and the pearl stitch? I'm going to pull out a couple of cows. And um, we haven't talked about knitting in the round yet, but knitting in the round is when you cast on to the circle Euler needles like I have, and then you attach the ends, and then you just knit all the way around, around and around and around, and you make a circle, which is how you end up with cows and stuff like that. So this is a cow, a very big cow, um, that's basically got knit and pearl, and that's it. And it's it's uh, a, some ribbing up at the top, which has got, looks like it's... Um, knit three pearl one up at the top to a ribbing and then it just goes into some color work and that basically all that is is just some slipping some stitches and you're only knitting one color per round you can see on the back that this you know on this round I was knitting white and then this round I was knitting blue and then this round I was knitting blue so like you know all of this design is just accomplished with color work um, and knitting and purling there is a lace bit at the bottom but it's really quite subtle um, but all of that color work at the top is just knitting and purling. And then this is like a, a lace at the bottom. And then this is a garter edge again to keep it from rolling. But on the lace, I mean, even that, there's just some eyelets and some increases and decreases. And like I said, I will show you how to do that. Um, again, here's another cowl that's entirely made up of color work. That's just slip stitches and knitting and purling. So again, you have the knit two, purl two at the top. And then you have, and by the way, my dogs are about to bark because I can see Amazon pulling up outside my door. And then you have um, some slip stitch polka dots and the rest is just self-striping yarn. I mean, it looks fancy, but 
it's just knit, purl, and slipping stitches. And again, you can see on the back where the, in fact, actually this didn't even slip stitches, I don't think. This was just color work. So you just switched, you know, from one color to another as you went. Super easy. Just knit and purl. And then this one, again, looks complex. And it is, it has some short rows in it, but it's comprised entirely of knits and pearls. So you have little garter ridges, and yeah, I really am about to get dogs barking, just so you know. You have some garter ridges, and then here you have some stock in it, and the short rows in there. And it's all just knit and pearl, and it looks super wavy and fantastical, but you know what I mean? You don't need to make, like I said, you don't even need to have, um, to have mastered any, any lace stitches for that. So those are a couple examples of stuff that just requires knit and purl. I want to show a couple other things just to give you some ideas of techniques. And then, so this is a small cowl I knit up and it's got a lace pattern at the bottom, some twisted knit ribbing. And then at the top, it's got this like beautiful little slip stitch mosaic. And basically that is just a slip stitch. So this is just knitting and purling different colors to get this mosaic pattern. Dogs. Um, this is what's called knitted lace. Um, and the difference between knitting lace and knitted lace is that knitted lace, oh, look at that dog hair is hanging off there. Knitted lace, you actually lace both sides. Like on, when you knit lace, sorry, when you, when you lace knit, you do lace pattern on one side and then you just do plain knitting on the other so that you end up with always at least a twist, like two stitches back to back. Whereas when you knit lace, you just knit the pattern in both sides. So it's a much harder thing to do. Um, and But you end up with a very delicate, transparent kind of pattern that looks really cool. Um, and then this fun thing is called brioche. And brioche is when you basically knit with two colors at the same time. So you do each row twice. You do the row first with the one color and then again with the second color. So every single row you see here where there is a pink next to a, a brown, I've knit that row twice. I knit it once with the pink and then the second time I slipped all the pinks and knit the browns. And the first time I slipped all the browns and knit the pinks. And so brioche is like one of those techniques where everyone's terrified of it. But honestly, I think it's a lot of fun and it gives you such a stunning result. And you can see I've incorporated beads here. And so that's a brioche cowl. And then my very last one is a cowl that I did that was, it is a worsted weight. So you can see that it's a bit a heavier yarn and it's got this kind of like lotusy, or I think it's got a stitch that, it's got like a slip stitch pattern and it's got a miter with a little bit of yarn over lacy stuff at the front to give it a kind of a kerchief look. But this one knit up in like an hour or two because it's so, it's just really easy pattern even though it looks really complicated. So that was just an example of some projects that I've done. I really like cowls obviously. But the very last thing I'm gonna do because this is now getting into like a half hour before I go is to show you Ravelry which is the place that you will go to look at projects that you wanna do. And you basically, it's a free website where you can go create an account. Um, because it, I don't think they'll let you look at the patterns without one, and I apologize for the shake. But basically, it's like the Mac Daddy of patterns. I mean, like, I can type, type fox into Ravelry, if I could actually type the word fox, I could, and then search, and bam, like, all sorts of foxes pop up. Like, I mean, this is a crochet fox, but, like, you know, this guy's a crochet fox, and I think that's a crochet dog. I think I should probably need to take the crochet off the list. So, okay, so I got rid of crochets. So, look, there's a little fox hat with ears. Look at that fox hat. I mean, so yeah. So there's like a little fox color work pattern. So, you know, like even fox socks, you can knit your own. There's like a knitted fox toy. That The point is, is like Ravelry is like getting to go shopping. Oh my God, I love that fox. I am gonna fox that's Let's see, that hat is pretty cool. So you can buy the pattern here. You can download it, buy it and download it. You can add it to your library, which is what I'm gonna do right now. 
And then your library is your list of all your patterns that you've saved. And then you can create projects for all the stuff you've done. Um, and so you can see all the people that have knit this fox hat. These are all the various projects that other people have knit. Like somebody did a pink fox with gray and like brown foxes and white foxes. So like you get an idea of what, how other people have done it. And then some of them will tell you why they did it and what they changed about it. And so, and then, um, if I go to like my notebook, I can look at my projects, the ones that I have knit. See, there's my cowl and there's like, you know, some other ones. Let's, I should do this one and you know, stuff like that. So, and then you can, other people can comment and favorite and blah, blah, blah. And then when I design my patterns, I can release them on Ravelry as well. So Ravelry is like the place to go, sorry, uh, for when you want to actually kind of look through patterns. I mean, I sometimes just lay in bed and like favorite patterns. I think I have. <laughs> I haven't even bought all the ones that have been favorited by me in my library. But like, I have got eight pages there's like a fox baby blanket this is one of the hardest patterns fox paws that I've never I haven't you know haven't even attempted that one yet but so there, from easy to hard there's all sorts of patterns out there and you can there's a lot that are available for free I also have a you know um there's a lot that there most of them are reasonably priced I like to buy them off Ravelry because that way you get the downloadable file and then you can just print it off or I use it on my remarkable um and 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 do that but I want to go th into um, how patterns work and all that, but I, it's going to have to wait. So maybe my, for our next session, you should think about something that, that you want to knit or if you want to ask me what's easy, something that you, you're thinking about and then I can go over the pattern with you and tell you kind of what you need for it and what skills. I could show you what stitches you need to know for it. Um, I can show you how to read it, how to read a chart and stuff like that. So um, maybe think about that. Like, I don't know, like, cause I'd really like to keep this going. I think, um, I think it'll be more fun if we do it together. Um, anyway, so that's all I have for her today. And I'm so sorry that it's like a half hour and you've had to listen to me yak, uh, and that you had to hear the FedEx guy come or the Amazon people come. And, um, but I really, really hope you find this fun and interesting and useful. And that's why I put the knitting at the beginning so that you could, you know, rewatch that and like, not worry about having to review my BS for like over and over again to get to it. Um, but anyway, so anyway, I love you and, uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay. Bye.